Welcome to Destination Utopia. I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... So what are some topics you want to come to? Uh, there is not much else, but Indiana, as far as I could see, uh, Tom Cotton came out and said a couple of stupid things about it. Uh, I don't have his exact quote, but it was something like, well... ISIS beheads people over things like that, you know. Oh, like, right. Yeah. Okay, that. Oh, got it. Okay, that makes everything cool now. <laughs> now. All kinds of people and all kinds of debates are always trying to pull that. It's like, oh, well, these people over here are so much worse, so it's okay. We don't need to improve at all. It's kind of what it boils down to it seems. In, it's not really an argument. Yeah. No. It's like it's like stepping. God, at least 50 years backwards. Mm -hmm. You know, this is the uh, whites and colored water fountains, you know? Right. I feel like Muslims are probably getting really sick and tired of being everybody's scapegoat. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it's kind of like they have this, their problem with their fundamentalists, same way as we have problems with ours. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. here's a good example of ours. <laughs> you right. Know? And ours are like, well, my counterpart is way worse, so don't look at me. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like we have to deal with them in our own society. We can't just keep pointing fingers at ISIS. Yeah. I mean, not like a Christian has ever blown up, oh, an abortion clinic or anything like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's... No, but I'm, as far as businesses being able, if it's a you own your own business. If you don't want to serve anybody for whatever reason, that should be fine. I don't think we need this extra religious law at all. Well, if you don't want to serve them for some reason, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. no shirts, no shoes, you know. Right. Um, if they smell and they're offending the other customers, I mean, you know. There would have to be some kind of uh, kind of a reason other than you're gay or you're black or you're this, you know. Mm -hmm. It would have to be something that we would consider legitimate, you know. Right. I don't think they should be able to have it as a company policy, but they should be able to turn people on an individual basis, be able to turn them away for their own reasons. Well, what reasons are you thinking of? Any reason at all. I mean, really, if you just don't like a person and they come into your store and you just don't like them, you want them to leave. And I would never turn away anybody for being gay. But if they want to do that, that's their store. But to do that, they don't need an extra religious exemption law. Yeah. That's just that's pushing it too far. And now they've opened up this whole can of worms. Every religion is going to be like, oh, well, I mean, I can do what I want now. Oh, kind of the same thing happened with like Hobby Lobby. Not yeah. everybody can you know, use a religion to just suck over their workers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I guess um, it was Wiccans or Pagans brought it up. Like they would never push forward. Like, well, now that the Christians did this, we have the right, you know, to practice nudity and polygamy. It's a religious freedom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and unlike the Christians, they're not hurting anybody else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the memories pizza thing was kind of funny and it really looks like at this point that it was all a scam from like beginning to end. Oh yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. It's like the political shit show you like to watch, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause that's like, um, they made their announcement one day and the next day they're, oh, we're out of business. Uh huh. It wouldn't. Yeah, they could last a little longer than that. Yeah, you haven't had time to go out of business. You don't go out of business <laughs> just for losing one day, you know. And uh -huh. who said you really lost that one day? Because I bet you in Indiana, fucking people would start lining around the blocks. Yeah, I'm not sure about the demographics there, but it seems like it would be that kind of state where everybody's like super Christian and they're all wanting to support this legislation and support the bigoted businesses so yeah they should have had more business yeah but they started a, a gofundme instead mm -hmm. and now they have like five thousand five hundred thousand dollars and they're missing it's closed and they're gone 
Wow. <laughs> It would be awesome if they turned it around and they took this money, like they're just like playing everybody this whole time, right? They took this money and they, you know, donated to, you know, equality causes or whatever. Yeah. I'm not sure what kind of charities are open for gay people, but I'm sure they exist. That would that would make them like here. Well, I can only think of Glad, mm-hmm. but that would make them like heroes. <laughs> Somebody should do that now. <laughs> Just kidding. This was our little plot all along. <laughs> that would be that would be that would be awesome. <laughs> but really, that's all I've seen going on this week. It was that and other people talking about that. Mm-hmm. I I caught some vague little bit of something about uh some some guru in a sex scandal. I don't even know what that's about. Dude, I don't know. I haven't been like up in the news this week. <laughs> Yeah, I feel the same way. We're just like, we kind of catch things like Facebook and like all the media, the internet is kind of like an ocean current. We're like barnacles and stuff, like catching little pieces out of it. Yeah. (laughs) And sometimes you got to watch out for those pieces. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You you don't know if it's edible or not. It's hard to sometimes figure out what's a, what's a good news source and what's just somebody following their own agenda. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. it's okay to follow your own agenda, but that's not where you really go to for news, you know? Right. You know, like you don't really that's, go to Alex Jones for news. Too. What? Yeah, no. You go there for his opinion. You don't go there for news. Yeah, exactly. And then some things come up and the and the real media has not covered it. Uh, it happens a lot. And you'll... Now, I'll consider like the New York Times... Um, the Washington Post, you know, things like this as credible sources Mm -hmm. Uh, without any other better information, you know, kind of hope that newspapers are fairly untouched yet, you know? And then Mm -hmm. if I can't find anything like that, uh, then I will consider whatever, you know, if the cops shoot somebody, whatever story that that local paper covers, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll take that as credible news. Yeah. And sometimes that's all you find. You just find something, uh, uh, an article in one of the local papers. And none of the other media outlets have picked it up at all. Hmm. I think they have their agenda. And if a local story isn't going to, you know, push it, they have no reason to cover it, especially if they have other stuff to do. Yeah. And kind of the national media companies, I don't think they're a good source. They, they don't cover a lot of things like you just said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that? They're all owned by like, was it seven or four corporations anyway? I forgot how many, but it's not very many. It's like three or four, maybe seven, or it used to be seven. It just <laughs> keeps getting consolidated. Yeah. That that own all the news media? Yeah, I'd heard something about that. You know, but newspapers that have always stood on their integrity kind of hope they hold up a little longer. (laughs) No, because they've already been bought out. Yeah, well, I might have to do some research on that because there's got to be a news source someplace. I guarantee you. I bet you anything. They're all bought out. Yeah. And then we have trouble like the independent ones. Like you see, don't know who they are. You don't know kind of what their point is. Don't know where they stand. So it's hard to interpret it. It's hard to take it at face value, you know, because you just don't know. It doesn't have, you know, those generations of credibility built up behind it. I like to use um, the new source called the anti-media. It's all like independent journalists and stuff. But yeah. like, you know, it's, you have to be suspicious. But I mean, if you use the same suspicion with um, legitimate, quote unquote, media, I mean, you kind of look at it, it's kind of the same deal. They all have reasons to make you suspicious. And they were who? Um, The anti-media. The anti-media? I think I've run yeah. across their name sometimes. Why do you favor them? Because there are so many I, out there. I, say that I favor them. Like I read news sources, like Huffington Post and everything. Yeah. 
I kind of touch on them. I like to touch on BBC and Al Jazeera and yeah. also like our media. Yeah. Huff Post is kind of strange. I mean, they seem credible, but it's just such mm-hmm. a silly name. <laughs> Huffington Post. Yeah. Yeah. Although I do love when I see people posting articles from uh, the New York Post or the or over in England, the Daily Mirror. Mm-hmm. Those things are, are barely news. <laughs> Those are not real newspapers at all. <laughs> oh, it's just like all the superficial, like celebrity shit. Uh, a lot of ce- celebrity shit. Um, all of their stories are just very sensationalized. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's like reading the weekly world news or something like that that you get out of it. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like that. You know, they're, they're fun to read. We just can't take them seriously. Mm-hmm. They're not actually useful. <laughs> I used to have, I'd read like CNN and stuff. I, I just got like so mad one day. I was like, why is this news? Why are you posting this? Yeah. I, I just went off like in the comments, like totally flamed them. People were like, well, you know, they're for news. But they can post other things too. I'm like, no, they can't. This is stupid. They're not paid for that. <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty of news. You're not running Seriously. out. Seriously, like for a globalized community, you're not running out of news. You don't have to post this about Kim Kardashian. Mm-hmm. Nobody actually cares. And if they do, then they need to be weaned off of that bullshit. She is just getting to look like more and more of a mutant freak every day. I can't, you know, I, I kind of wish I could just set, you know, like, all there is is to like unfriend somebody on Facebook. I wish you could put in like a keyword and just like no more Kim Kardashian. <laughs> <laughs> they really need a dislike button on the whole internet. Like, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of happening anyway. Google kind of tailors like every web page you ever see. You know, it's just good because you don't have to see that. But at the same time, you get a skewed perspective on the whole world. Yeah. People, they're always like Kim Kardashian and shit. Like their web page is going to be full of more of the same. And that's just going to look like the whole world to them. It's going to kind of become like this cycle. But I think it's important. So it becomes important and looks important to them. <laughs> oh, they're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never actually watched them. This is just like you can't avoid them. Mm-hmm. There's nowhere to yeah, go. No. There's nowhere to run. <laughs> you wind up getting Kardashian news or Kardashian pictures. Mm-hmm. And there's just like, you know, there's an ad for a TV show on Hulu. I'm just like, no, I don't want to see that. Yeah. And it's just a reality TV show about their family, which is they haven't done anything. Or the, they don't do anything. Or the Duck Dynasty guys. Ugh. No. Yeah. I don't want any of you in my world. <laughs> yeah, stay in the swamp, guys. You guys stay in your pool, stay in your swamp. Don't need to be on TV. One thing I'm expecting to kind of happen sort of soon, let's say in the next year, okay? Let's say by 2016. Let's make this a real, mm-hmm. a real prediction. There'll be an Onion article that just says, you know what? We give up. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't make up anything better than what's actually happening <laughs> you know we started we were satirical we didn't expect the world to become that <laughs> <laughs> it's always funny when people don't realize that onions a satire newspaper yeah and like they post stuff they get mad about it they get mad that it's satire like why would people do that it's misleading I'm sorry, you're too dumb to catch on. I I find it kind of funny when I get busted on one. Like I'm all I'm all ready to to like repost something and it'd be like, oh, it's but the onion doesn't catch me. But there are a lot of onion copies, like um, uh-huh. chive and other related onion related names. <laughs> current, the Daily Current, um, uh-huh. and a few others. 
every now and then they'll sucker me in with something. Usually a Sarah, a Sarah Palin story. Cause right, because who knows? Because I do believe she would say fucking anything. <laughs> <laughs> so when they post a satirical article about her, oh, she said this, she said that, whatever. You know, she says... Uh, Completely believable. The Tea Party is going to walk on water this Easter. I'm already half believing that. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> then I'll look and it's like, oh, it's Chive. Oh, yeah. all, right. all right, guys, you got me. Good one. <laughs> well, it's kind of like you know, South Park will always kind of parallel what's going on. They don't ever blow it out of proportion like really that much. Anything they did on like Mormons, like that's actually like the story. Like so many things, like they don't really take it that far away from reality. They yeah. just kind of make it look extra ridiculous or different perspective. But it's like the same thing as what's really going on. I don't really watch South Park. When I hear there's a good one, I'll I'll go and try to find mm-hmm. it or something like yeah. that. There's a lot of shitty ones you have to wade through. They are their show is kind of like. I have like a class of shows, you know, that I don't, I only watch from time to time because Hmm. when you first start watching it, it's like, wow, this is really new. This is really fresh. This is really original. But then it's still the same thing over and over. It's the same kind of thing. Uh Yeah. So it just gets like fresh and original anymore. Yeah. It gets like tiresome. So I have to leave that show for a while and then come back later, like South Park. Howard Stern, when he used to be on, it would be like, cool, lesbians. Then after a while, a couple of weeks, it's like, fucking lesbians again. Oh. Then you can't watch that show anymore. I don't know what that show is, but that sounds awful. It is. It is. (laughs) But awful is good sometimes. Awful is good sometimes in the same way that reading other opinions is good sometimes kind of something like what you were touching about, you know, like reading no new sources, kind of giving a different opinion and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, awful is good the same way, you know? Yeah. It's a bit of variety round out your perspective. Yeah. But you I watch can't say I feel the same way about what you watch a few episodes and then you just got to shut it off. Cause it's enough. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what were you saying? Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. It's one of those days. It was far, I think, kind of just all over Indiana. I suppose you feel like it's taking us farther away from Utopia. I'd have to agree. Because refusing service, I don't think it's something that should have to be an issue anyway. I think for um, national corporations like Walmart, or sometimes that's the only place you can shop. Right. That happens a lot. Like things like that, where they're a monopoly almost. Yeah. I don't think they should be able to refer service to people who aren't disrupting anything. But I do think um, small businesses where you are in your store, you should be able to deny business to people. Yeah. I don't. I just don't see small business surviving very much longer. I can't see how they oh, can they, do it. <laughs> As um, not refusing service to like a bunch of people in that sort of way, it's definitely bad for them, and they will just run themselves out of business. But hey, that's what they want to do. I'm not sad to see them go. Oh, I'm not sad to see them go. But you know, with you know, Walmart has already taken up the world, and then if it's not Walmart. Mm-hmm. It's like Amazon or something like that. I mean, right. the delivery from Amazon I'm is so Swiss. fucking good. Yeah, I definitely love Amazon. The thing with Amazon is you can you know produce and sell your stuff, and you don't have to hire employees and go through the whole process. Yeah, you can just sell it directly on Amazon. So it's kind of a different way for small businesses to do business. Yeah, they don't have to have like the storefront and everything, and they can reach like you know everybody in the world pretty much. Yeah. So it's kind of, you know, it's a different take on small business. Yeah. It's definitely nice for shopping because you can find just anything at all there, you know. But, uh, you know, I don't know about other small businesses and things like that. But when I've looked at a few times of, like, marketing DVDs and things on Amazon, fuck, man, they take a huge take. 
It's oh, like, really? Is it like oh, totally yeah. not worth it? It's like 70 cents on a dollar. Oh. Well, that's not so great. But at least you don't have to use Amazon. You have the internet. There's a ton of avenues to mark it down. Yeah. Yeah. It's also pricey. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out some marketing strategies. I, 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 It's just one of those areas I'm not the best in. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. And it all takes some kind of money to get going. But, That's true. Always takes some money. Yeah. So you read the article that I posted into Destination Utopia? I read about half of it. It was a really good article. It was kind of what I was trying to express, but I just can't get the words together. <laughs> Want to give a short recap so they know what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah. So the article was, you know, basically kind of centered on what's been going on in Ferguson, but did a good job of kind of explaining like the whole system and the people that have warrants in Ferguson. It's like a large percentage of people. They didn't have criminal warrants. It was for stuff and leaving their trash out in the wrong spot, not mowing their lawns. Like, it's like civil ordinances, not yeah. criminal issues at all. They're all being treated like criminals. So it's kind of like they don't have enough crime to go after, apparently. So it just recategorized everybody. <laughs> yeah, they just treat them all like criminals and extorting money from them. They're kind of funding their city that way and kind of touched on how our economic system has completely changed. Where we have everybody you know, sending money up in this you know web of rules and laws that can't really be followed. I definitely see it how they're talking about the large banks are extorting money from people. Right. And setting up this, you know, this matrix of rules they have to follow that they don't actually expect you to follow because they're counting on you breaking the rules and then taking your money. Like when you um you don't have any money in your checking account, so they charge you more money. So now you even have less money. Yeah. And it's just how they're taking all your money and sending it up upwards. And 30 bucks for bouncing a check is pretty damn steep. Mm hmm You know. That's not chicken feed. And for the most part, it's usually more than what you wrote the damn check for. Yeah, most likely. Mm-hmm. Thank God I'm write checks. I definitely get really mad when banks pull that kind of bullshit. Fortunately, I'm still eligible for um, a student checking account, so that saves me a lot of grief. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, it just kind of showed how like all these institutions in our society all kind of running on the same pattern of taking all the money and sending it upwards. Mm-hmm. And then getting angry that, uh, oh, we might have to pay people more. Mm hmm. And getting upset with it and having. I feel like everybody wasn't nibbling away at everybody's income. Mm -hmm. You know, we wouldn't, it wouldn't be such an issue. Like, cost of living wouldn't be so damn high. Yeah. The, the fi my favorite thing that I saw the last time the conversation was going about raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. You know, and for some reason, everybody focuses on McDonald's workers. Yeah, it's kind of odd, isn't it? Over that, you know, it's all about McDonald's workers somehow. Yeah, I'm sure Wendy's sucks just as much. And they had, then there was that, that kind of meme going around showing a, like an automatic hamburger cooker. Uh-huh. That would mass produce cooked hamburgers. And it's like... Oh, yeah, give them $15 an hour and this will happen. And it's like, if that could happen, it's going to happen anyway. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's going to become automated anyway. Like everything has been on this progression of getting more and more, more and more automated since the Industrial Revolution. You know, so, you know, if you're paying them five bucks, a month, five bucks a week, you know, five bucks a week, five bucks an hour. And you can have an automated thing, flip hamburgers. You could still save that five bucks an hour. 
So they're still mm-hmm. gone, regardless of what the minimum wage is. Right. But you they're know, not considering that lots of um, customers don't want to use that thing. Yeah. The thing's going to need to be serviced. The software has to be you know, upgraded and fixed. You have to place eventually, too. There's going to be hardware components they have to deal with. And you're still going to have to have people in there to like help people use them. Yeah. I think you know, that could end up costing more. Somebody would have to come in every February and reload the McRib program. <laughs> <laughs> when, I, when I worked at restaurants, and they'd have like, um, and we had like these menus that came from the corporate office, like sent through the internet, and then they would load on our screen our menu. That thing broke all the fucking time. <laughs> but that was like so much more simple, and they could not keep it together. Yeah. Yeah. What what they should do there is first off make higher education and more affordable. Mm-hmm. Or well, I didn't see um, which I college was free. that where they're making um free tuition for everybody that's making under one hundred and twenty five thousand a year. I had seen an article about that. Somebody I think it was a California university mm-hmm. that was making tuition that said it was making tuition free. Right. For families Quote, over. unquote. Yeah. Yeah. And that would be great. That would be great to see a trend. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, then from there, create the jobs that use those kind of skills. You know, more scientific um, research, more engineering, you know, more architecture, you know, things like that. Things that that will help us progress, you know. Mm Right. Now the education system, like you're in school for 12 years and you're supposed to go to more school, but they're only training you to be workers anyway. Right, right. And it, it doesn't even make a difference what degree you walk out with anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, you're still coming to come into the workforce and get an entry level job just like anybody else. Yep. You know, so you are the smartest fry cook. That's, that's <laughs> great. You know, you're not doing what you were trained for. Mm-hmm. You know, you're you're not an archaeologist. You know, you're you're not. There's actually um, a group of archaeologists in Great Britain that are petitioning for a living wage. I wouldn't be surprised. How much money could there be in that? There's not any money in it, which is really unfortunate. Yeah. Like if I was less responsible, I would just study archaeology and geology. Yeah, because that's Family, something. Medianly irresponsible, so I'm doing anthropology. <laughs> yeah, because that's that's advancing knowledge that does not produce anything. Uh huh. Well, it produces. It produces. It doesn't produce money. I think you know history is really important. It's really important to understand our cultural history and our biological history and the history of the Earth and how it kind of interacts with us and how I interact with it. It's just not something anybody can make money off of. No, I totally agree, but 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 that's the point. There's no money in it, so mm-hmm. it's devalued. So it's just not that important and eh, you get the people who truly truly love it doing it, but mm-hmm. then they have to petition for a living wage. Yeah. You know, because because it doesn't produce money, so there's no value in it. Just like art. Yep, that's you know? true. I wish we could have kind of a dual value system. We have our monetary value system, but then there's a way to live off of creating value and exposing value that isn't monetary. Yeah. I don't know. What kind of, I don't know. What kind of structure would that be, do you think? That's something that could definitely get us closer to utopia. There's a big kind of empty gap in like how or what even that is. How do you survive if you don't produce something that makes money for somebody? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And breaks within five years. That's an important part, too. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. You, you got to make something, but you can't make it well. <laughs> <laughs> then Does that would take just, too much time? 
because then people will just have it forever. They'll never need to go buy another one. Yeah. Because it's like all of our stuff is meant to be obsolete in a few years. Mm -hmm. That's really unfortunate, too. It creates a huge waste of stuff we're throwing out. We're just wasting more resources to replace what we had when it didn't have to be made that way. I mean, we, as far as I could see, we should have been in space like 20 years ago. Just definitely be there by now. <laughs> you know, we should have had a moon and a Mars base already. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that uh, Mars one totally flopped. One of the rovers? Are you talking about the no, Mars? On Mars? Mars one, like the program they're getting funding and like interviewing and training people to eventually go to mars like one-way trip oh oh, oh yeah like, that one yeah they totally flopped it's not going to happen but you do anything but luckily still there's spacex there's spacex spacex is is in, an interesting project yeah i haven't heard anything about virgin galactic in a long time either though yeah, I don't think that's going to be a thing. I don't know. You know, I, I it might not be a successful thing, but I'm I'm I I wouldn't think that Richard Branoff would would ignore it. Would just like let it drop. He doesn't seem like that kind of person. I mean, sometimes it just drops. It doesn't matter if you're like not letting it. It's just going to do what it wants. Yeah. The last thing I heard was and this cracked me up, and this was years ago, this, this has got to be 10 years ago now, was um, the biggest thing that was stopping Virgin Galactic from opening was that they needed a permit for a spaceport. Who do you even get a permit for that from? Which means that put it in the government's hand trying to figure out what a permit for a spaceport would be. Uh huh. Well, if they can't figure out what it is, like they don't have the right to tell people they need one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, government, for foiling us again. Yeah. So that's yeah. So SpaceX, SpaceX is cool. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, the Mars thing just. I remember hearing about them. They were running into problems with uh, actually getting the uh, biospheres to work. Yeah, there's, I guess there's been like a bunch of problems. Like they just don't have enough money. They don't have a solid plan. They've yeah. just been kind of doing it as they go this whole time. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's unfortunate. I had high hopes. But, you know, I think Elon Musk, there's one thing I didn't really like about him. I found it really creepy. I can't remember what it was. Something to do with um, sentient AI. I remember. I don't remember. I think he was kind of a proponent of you know, increasing artificial intelligence, you know, capacity for consciousness and sentient sentiency. I don't know. Do you remember? I don't remember. I haven't heard that because that's that's really interesting. I've always been like fascinated with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's something that you'll see in your lifetime is the um, kind of unfolding of our alien or robotic overlords? <laughs> Aliens or robotic ro overlords? Um, robotic, not aliens, just we created them and they just kind of outpace us in intelligence and they're like, you know what? We're going to take care of you guys. You know, I could go either way. I, well, I'm as we've discussed it in a previous show, I'm really kind of down with that. Uh, you know, I it, it just because something is sentient does not automatically make it evil. And if it's not programmed for any kind of thoughts like that, how would it develop them on their own? And why? Well, if you program it to become conscious, it's going to have you know, whatever thoughts it was be a product of its environment, like everybody. And it's going to pick things out from its environment and come to certain conclusions. Which would be, you know, people are not capable of taking care of themselves. Well, 
Well, I don't know if it's a matter of capable. It's just a matter of not wanting to. <laughs> I mean, either way. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we don't want to so much. We created sentient robots, so we don't have to. <laughs> That's a good point. It's kind of subconscious, subconscious drive. But then why would the robot make, make a moral decision about that? That's a really good question. It might not make any moral decisions and just think we're completely irrelevant and start building their own world. Mm, not the worst thing in the world, you know, that's not going to hurt us at all. No, I think it might. I think it might. They're not going to be... One thing won't be going off of... Going for most of the same resources we would be, except for, like, you know, metals and minerals, most likely. So they won't be in competition for food. So, I mean, that's a good thing. Right. But for space, I think there's going to be a lot of competition there. Mm, no, because they, could, they I, could also live and adapt to a lot of places that we just flat out couldn't that's true there's possibility and, they don't want to and for the most part it seems like there are probably more of those planets than livable planets oh so you're talking about like shooting them off into space well if they want to start their own civilization <laughs> you know i mean that would be fair but i mean they might not see it that way we would have to talk to them i would imagine um, I think there's high hopes for reasonable robots. And they could tell us, and they could tell us where the good livable planets are. So they're going to send off us off away. Sure. Well, uh, hopefully, you know they're really good at building space shuttles, and we're we're going to have to spread out sooner or later. Yeah, I guess you know if it's done at the hands of robots, that's okay. <laughs> Why are you so anti-robot? <laughs> I'm not anti-robot. I'm not. You're an anti-droid. <laughs> Aww. It's going to be like the new homophobe, the new racist. If, if... I, I, That's going to be my generation's huge moral shortcoming is not accepting the robots. Not accepting the robots. Not, not accepting the real illegal aliens. <laughs> which would probably be the reptilians i guess i don't know <laughs> i've heard those things are bad uh i've heard they're bad too i've never heard they're good but then again i've heard okay. I, i've heard the nordics are okay but they're working with the nazis in antarctica so how can you yeah, really I trust them Maybe Nazis aren't that bad, or the Nazis are getting played. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I think if reptilians were a thing, I think it's more likely they were, you know, from kind of the dinosaur age. Yeah, it's kind of evolved on our planet like we did from primates. They evolved from a reptile of some sort. And they were just there in their world, living with their other reptilian pets and livestock. And then whatever happened to dinosaurs, volcanoes, or the asteroid, whichever one it was, it killed them, or both, kind of wiped them all out. And then the intelligent species went underground. But then again, you so, are a Doctor Who fan. I did just see the episode, <laughs> but you know, no, no, I already like thought about this before I saw the episode. Doctor Who is just like really intelligent. That's all. Uh, are are you seeing the new ones? Not yet. I'm catching up with Matt Smith. Oh, okay. I stopped watching it when um ten reincarnated because that just like that was really sad for me. I couldn't even handle it, so I stopped watching for a while. And then like I rewatched Tenant, and now I'm getting through Matt Smith. Yeah. No spoilers. Tenant is still my favorite. I, yeah, I I don't think anybody will ever be better than Tenant. Yeah, it it takes me a good couple of episodes to get on board with a new Doctor. Yeah, you know. I saw a few, and he's not bad. 
I like him better than Matt Smith, I think, but which one? Not David Tennant. I like him better than Matt Smith, I think. Which one? Who? Um, Capaldi. Capaldi, yeah. I haven't seen any of those. And Netflix has dropped it now, so I I, I probably won't see them. Oh, <laughs> it's on Hulu. Yeah. I started watching Dexter, though, finally. Oh. Starting season two. It's a great show. I love it way too much. <laughs> I, I liked it. it. It gets a little choppy in spots, though. Like choppy how? No spoilers, though. Uh, are you in the one with Jimmy Smith? What? You, you're in season two. Is that the one with Jimmy Smith? I don't think so. No, I'm more the spot where he has... um. That one cop in a cage in the swamp. And Lila. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like walked up to that cabin. Yeah. And it's like she's about to open the door. That was definitely a good one. It's the next season that had Jimmy Smith, I think. And that's the one that, that was taking place during the writer's strike. So, frankly, just about everything uh-huh. on television sucked then. So. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've heard like middle seasons aren't the best like the first couple and like the last couple are really good yeah but i liked it a lot i liked it to the end wasn't happy with the finale no spoilers oh but no it was no. no 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 just wasn't happy with it i i, I probably okay. wouldn't have been happy with the sopranos ending if i saw that one either but i okay I, Heard the last season was a dog, so I didn't bother getting it. That's efficient. I'm expecting him to just die at the end, but don't tell me if I'm right or wrong. Yeah, I mean, I I wind up getting a getting certain things spoiled for me, you know, because everybody watches something before I watch it. I wait for it on Netflix uh-huh. or something like that. But at the That's same problem, at the same time, I think the things that I watch just tend to be better, better shows because I've had the whole world filter it already for me. Right. Yeah. That's <laughs> a good know? point. So I've been screened. So I hear this season of walking dead is great. I'll find out in October. Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to find a way to watch that. Yeah, we're going to have to see. I, I, I'm kind of interested in new, the new show that they're coming out with, except that I hate the fucking title. Better Call Saul? No, no, no. Fear oh, of... Oh, The Walking Dead spinoff? Fear of The Walking Dead, yeah. Oh. They could have come Yeah, up I, I hope it's more about, like, killing zombies and zombies and zombies rather than interpersonal drama. I like the interpersonal drama on The Walking Dead. Uh, Sometimes that's like all the episode is about, though, and I just wanted to see zombies. <laughs> I, I also like the kind of, yeah, you know, it, it's like anything else, man. You, you're in a world full of zombies. You adjust, and it's like not that big a deal anymore. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know? That's true. That's a very good point. And I am interested to see what happens with Carl as the show goes on. Right, you know, it's probably gonna be a psychopath, or you know, some other young ones, which they ha- they don't tend to keep them around very very much, you know. But mm-hmm. to see what these people are who have pretty much grown up in a world of zombies, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. so they're not particularly missing anything because they don't know it. Uh huh. You know. Yeah, I hope that maybe that's what this uh, spinoff will be about more. It'll still be interpersonal drama, but you get another perspective on it. Yeah. I also but either way, more zombies. Yeah. I also like that when I watch The Walking Dead, I I kinda notice a little bit of a, a religious influence on it. How so? Not like it's actually preaching anything, but it it all feels very old testament biblical. Yeah, I see what you mean. Where the characters are really kind of archetypes, you know? Uh-huh. And they're they're playing yeah. specific roles. You know, so I mean, picture that story being handed down for a couple of hundred generations and what it would sound like on the other end. Mm-hmm. Well, definitely thought about like, you know, a hundred years in the future. 
like, you know, is the disease still around? Do zombies like pop out of the ground sometimes? Or is it just kind of being put down to legend? That's kind of spinoff I wish they would do. That would be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I always kind of think about, like apocalyptic scenarios. Like if you're watching a show, it's because somebody in the story is living. So, you know, what's going to, how is that culture going to develop out of this huge mess? Mm -hmm. And do you always have zombies? Right. Yeah. yeah, I think I think they will. Like, um, I think the virus will live in like the water and soil and stuff like animals will pick it up probably. And like, it'll just be this disease that comes up sometimes. You know, this practice of cremation because mm -hmm. otherwise it'll come back. and That's bad. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and there might be if you have a loved one that dies, there might be a ceremonial like head removal. Heading. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Yeah, so I was thinking beheading and cremation. Or a shot in the head, but with like a really just ornate gold plated gun. Uh huh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. All these rituals kind of growing out of it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But I could just hear, I could just hear in my head sometimes when I'm walking, the, watching Walking Dead, like, and thus Rick did give up leadership of the tribe. <laughs> and settled into farming <laughs> you know? uh -huh. yeah and he farmed for four score years <laughs> isn't it like 40 years yeah uh, huh? the bible usually uses 40 yeah yeah that's all there's all kinds of patterns so that's sometimes what i see when i'm watching and i'm like it's so Old Testament. You, you you could be reading this, you know, like if you were, if you were back in biblical times, I think it would look mm -hmm. a lot like The Walking Dead. Well, zombie Jesus. Zombie Jesus. No, further, further back. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're coming up on, it's Good Friday or, you know, kind of okay Friday. Yeah. Just, yeah. A lot of a lot of posts on Facebook today of Jesus hanging on the cross and stuff like that. Zombie Jesus. I've been, yeah, I've been seeing a lot of that. I don't think we actually get to celebrate Zombie Jesus until Sunday. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't think I've ever celebrated Easter. Mm -hmm. I think it's about time to wrap it up. I think so. It's been a slow news week. Nothing else to really go on there. But um, we will keep striving for utopia. Utopia. I just want mine with robots. <laughs> robots are fine. <laughs> okay. So until next time, I am Bunny Williams. I'm Rosemead. See you in utopia.